Today we come to the realization that somebody resents their entitled father. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, I confronted my parents for the truth and my dad confronted me with a knife. It feels gaudy to post again so soon. In my last post I mentioned my mom miscarried in her recent pregnancy after a bad fall. Something didn't smell right about the information I got after all the comments I received about it, so I decided the only way I was going to get the truth was to go straight to the horse's mouth. So I went to see my parents on Sunday. They were both home and resting. They both look like heck too. My mom, aside from needing crutches to walk more than a few feet, has a lot of marks and bandages all over her face from the fall she took. And my dad, well, just see his description after the beating I gave him in my last post to see how he looked. My parents were beyond shocked I showed up, and I demanded to know if there was ever really a baby, or if it was all just some half-butt plan to guilt me for not coming home. My dad said I had a lot of nerve showing up and just letting myself in after what happened. But my mom broke down in sobs and said she really had been pregnant. She lurched into the bedroom and retrieved a small but kind of ornate looking urn and it had ashes inside it. I even checked to see if it looked or smelled like ashes from cigarettes or a barbecue or something but they didn't smell anything like that. In fact, I barely smelled anything at all. I asked why they brought home the urn claiming the ashes were in it before. I checked online and it said 7-10 to 10 days at least to get ashes back. And my mom was in the hospital no more than 5 days. My mom said they bought the urine online and expected to get the baby's ashes back when they went to the crematorium. And were really upset they couldn't bring the baby home yet, so they just waited until they could get the ashes a few days later. And then went out to get drunk. Mom claimed the crematorium did things a little quicker because she begged them. There was genuine tears in her eyes. I've seen her crocodile tears many times, but this didn't look like that. I got more information as to what happened about how my mom fell. She was running late to see her doctor, an OBGYN or whatever they call them. Mom explained that she overslept while taking a nap and was trying to hurry out to make her appointment, then slipped on a toy while trying to get down the steps. The guardrails for the porch had rotted and broken off like two years ago and dad never fixed or replaced them, so my mom had nothing to grab onto in order to stop her fall. And down she went right off the porch and landed face and then belly into the ground. She even showed me marks all over her stomach from where she landed. She told me the baby would have been another boy. I've got two brothers and two sisters and there would have been one more brother. Then, mom told me that a doctor warned her against ever trying to have another baby because her body might not be able to handle it again due to her age and prior injuries. I kind of figured that was the case after some things people messaged me about it, but it didn't make it any easier to hear in person. Finally, I asked the big question, why did she blame me? Mom started to say that day they showed up at my apartment was just really bad or something like that. But dad finally spoke up and interrupted her. He yelled that it's because it was all my fault. If I'd done like he said and moved back home at Thanksgiving, then I would have been there to help. And now a baby is dead because of me. I yelled at him that if he'd actually bothered to fix the darn porch, then mom might not have ever fell and that's on him. Plus, he didn't even bother to tell me mom was pregnant back at Thanksgiving. Not that it would have changed anything. We continued yelling at each other, and rather than side with anyone, my mom just left the room crying. My dad looked like a lit match from how red he was, and he brandished his old hunting knife at me while yelling to get out of his house. As I was leaving, he said I was no longer his son. I told him that I hadn't seen him as a father in years because he was always a terrible dad. But before I went out the door, I said to him that I'd be filing for a restraining order, and if he ever lays a hand on my siblings like he tried to do with me, then next time he'll lose more than a couple of teeth. And I won't hesitate to call police or CPS if he tries the same crap with my siblings as he did me. He yelled plenty of insults at me from the front door like, you son of a witch. I said back that was an insult on mom and he got red in the face again. Then I gave him a one finger salute before riding away on my mountain bike. So yeah. I guess that's as good of an answer as I have for anyone. If this isn't the truth, then I don't know what is, but does it matter anymore? I'm filing for a restraining order as soon as I can, and I'll be looking to move apartments after I start bringing in money from my new job. I don't know if I'll feel like updating again after this, I'm just gonna be depressed remembering all this. So I think I may be done here, unless my parents decide to do something bad to my siblings, but hopefully I've gotten my point across to them. 
I've already beaten dad up twice, and he still looked somewhat afraid of me while clutching that knife. It felt like he was looking at a monster. Maybe I am in his eyes, but if my being a monster to him means he never hurts my siblings, then that's fine. I'll be the monster. Sayonara, everybody. Obviously, this is very heavily influenced from OP's experiences growing up, but for all those kids who don't have somebody that can look out for them in the way that OP does, I think OP can rest assured knowing that those siblings must be grateful knowing that OP's got their back, trying to spare them from having really an abusive home. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of hearing about these entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is Entitled Dad at Amateur Cup Final. Oh well, y'all, it's been a little while, but I finally have a new story to tell here. It happened last Saturday during the cup final of a regional amateur cup here in Scotland. Me, OP, 18, center midfielder, Mr. Bad Knee, S is the son, Jason, he was a good guy, just a dirty player, he's 19, Tyler, longtime teammate and great friend, and Entitled Dad, we all know this one, so, as stated, this was a cup final and a regional cup. We had a lucky run of easy games playing against teams that weren't as good. We were also lucky to have the final played in our city at a semi-pro pitch. I first heard the entitled dad during our team talk. He was hurling abuse from across the pitch. I assumed this would pass, but oh boy was I wrong. Around 15 minutes into the match, the other team goes through on goal and my defender wipes the attacker out. The referee lets it go on and the Entitled Dad loses it and starts hurling abuse at the referee. But this was just the start. Another 10-ish minutes into the match, I get the ball at about the halfway line as I move past two players. I get tripped up and the referee gives a free kick. The son, Jason, says, Come on, man, get up, it wasn't all that bad. I said, wasn't all what? You tripped me and I fell, not making anything out of it. The Entitled Dad from the sideline said, Referee, that is absolutely disgraceful. That was an obvious dive. The Entitled Dad sees me and the son mouthing off and then shouts, Jason, don't let him be cheeky to you. You freaking hit him. Jason ignores it and continues with the game. The referee goes to Entitled Dad and asks him to calm down and let him ref the game. The Entitled Dad seems to oblige and a few more calls go our way and no noise from the Entitled Dad. That was until Jason missed time to tackle on me badly and wipes me out. I fall awkwardly but get up as soon as I could. By the time I get up, Tyler's already arguing with Jason. Tyler said, that's not the first time you've done that today, dirtiest freak. Jason says, that was just mistimed, I'm not trying to injure anyone, man. Tyler says, come on, you're not fooling anyone. Once again, I hear the entitled dad shout, Jason, freaking hit him, don't let him talk to you like that. I pull Tyler away from the situation to calm him down, all the while the Entitled Dad is still shouting for his son to hit one of us. Just after halftime, maybe about 8 minutes after it, I receive the ball around 25 yards from goal. I look to play a pass to the left side of the pitch. When I look up, I see Jason charging at me to get the ball. I shift the ball left of my left foot to set up the pass. As I do this, Jason slides and catches my leg as I plant it. He hits about halfway up the inside of my lower leg. I feel something in my leg crack and I felt a shooting pain in my knee as I fall. When I'm on the ground, I just start swearing quietly, feeling the pain get worse and worse. Jason stands over me saying, Crap, sorry, you okay, 23? That was a bad tackle, freak, sorry. Tyler comes over and pushes Jason away and they start arguing. The entitled dad says, Oi, ref, that's horrible. He put his hands on my son. That's at least a yellow. Jason, well done, I told you to hit one of them. I love that from you, keep it up. I get helped off the pitch and put my knee brace on. The pain's still shooting through my knee, but it was bearable. And I wasn't worried about it too much. The match continues with the entitled dad continuing his antics with every call the ref makes. The game ends 2-1 to one to us, and we go and shake hands with the other team. As I was going to shake hands with the other team's manager, the entitled dad was right next to him. He said, you're a disgraceful little diving jerk. Look at you playing into it with your knee brace. Grow up. I just laugh at the entitled dad and say, play into it? Nah, I'm just being safe. I don't want to ruin my leg jumping with that trophy. But hey, better luck next season, mate. I must have got under his skin because he wasn't happy. He said, yeah? The difference next year is if you make it to the finals, you won't be walking for weeks after. I'll make sure of that. I said, mate, grow up, eh? You must be like what, around your mid-40s? You need to chill out, mate. 
You know, it's one thing for people to constantly berate the refs being those stereotypical parents at sports events, but actively yelling for your kid to tackle and potentially injure and even just kind of advertising, go ahead and injure them, they should have been kicked out. At the very least, kick the parent out. Our next story is, Entitled mother thinks she can use the accessible parking because her child uses a stroller complete with fainting when confronted by police. Backstory, I'm a young female with POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. From the outside, I look just like any other woman around my age. However, this has caused many encounters with entitled people when I use accessible seats, bathrooms, parking spots, etc. I made this little alert badge that says, I have an invisible disability called POTS. But of course, an entitled mother won't care. I was looking for parking at the grocery store, and I saw someone pull into an accessible spot without putting up their placard. No problem, it happens. In fact, two out of three times it turns out they just forgot and they're grateful that I reminded them. This entitled parent was that one out of the three. Excuse me, I said parking in the accessible spot next to her. I think you forgot to put up your placard. Entitled mother glares at me while picking up her child, her kid's about three years old. It's none of your business, go away. I said I just don't want you to get a ticket. The minimum fine in my area is $250. Pretty expensive for that entitled mother to get a spot that's a bit closer to the door. I still don't suspect anything. She said, well, do you have a placard? You look perfectly healthy. Not this again. In the last story I posted here, an entitled mother told me I didn't look disabled when I used the accessible bathroom. So I resort to my usual response. Not everyone has a visible disability. I motion towards my alert badge. The entitled mother doesn't listen. How do I know that's not your grandma's permit? Young kids like you think you're so privileged and entitled to everything. Yes, I am so privileged to have expensive hospital bills, a heart rate of 130 plus every time I stand up, failure of my autonomic nervous system, and get judged by entitled people who think they're the handicapped police. One of the store employees comes over after hearing the commotion and gets a police officer. Entitled mother panics and tries to run inside the store. The police say, excuse me, do you, the entitled mother, have a handicap permit? She says, well, no, but um, I have a child who uses a stroller. Then she glances at my alert badge and quickly says, wait, uh, I mean, actually I have a disability, but I just forgot my placard. She proceeds to slowly fall backward onto her knees, then hips, then back with her hand over her forehead. Then she immediately stands up and says, See? I have pots. I just fainted. I'm silently laughing at this point because 1. Fainting doesn't look like that, and 2. Standing up that quickly would probably cause a person with pots to pass out again. By the way, pots isn't just about fainting when you stand up for too long. Less than half of people with it faint regularly. I've only fainted a few times since I was diagnosed. The police officer quickly writes a ticket for her and entitled mother leaves. Now I'm hoping her child won't grow up to be like her. My question is, if you see somebody taking a handicap accessible parking spot who clearly doesn't need it and doesn't have a placard or a plate, is it worth trying to call to complain? Or do you just kind of silently seethe over it? Has anybody actually like tried to get these people in trouble? I'd like to know what you guys think. This next story is, I resent my father. Am I overreacting? I, 19 year old female, have had a struggle to talk to, look at, or even call the man who brought me into this world, my father. I'm unclear if we have a healthy father-daughter relationship. I never typically talk to anyone about my relationship with him or fully explain on it in great detail. My friends think he's a crappy person, but that's about it. Never had I thought he could be mentally abusive until I started looking back on the things he said and done. To describe him, he hates being wrong and will argue with you until the very end. He has explosive anger, has always been cold, and is very outspoken about his beliefs. To start, my parents always say their arguments are never as bad as other married couples. I beg to differ. My earliest memory of my father ever doing something wrong is when he choked out my mother for swearing at us at the dinner table, then went about eating like normal. It was the only time he had ever gotten even slightly physically violent. I struggled in school when I was little and he'd help me with schoolwork. I struggled to grasp a lot of things and needed it frequently repeated. 
He would grow impatient and would just start screaming and yelling at me while I'd just cry. In later years, I really focused on my education and worked hard on my schoolwork, working myself to or near exhaustion and always trying to be on top of my class. Loving the high grades, high GPA, honor roll, distinguished honors. My father, however, either didn't bat an eye at my achievements, would only focus on the mistakes I would make, or negatively critique my hard work. Over the years, my parents' arguments have ramped up in severity. They would argue heavily for a whole day or more than once a week. Neither of my parents listened to me when I would voice my concerns. They genuinely believed everything was fine. Meanwhile, I could hear them arguing downstairs or outside from my bed. My mother has always defended his behavior, saying that it was because he went to the military. I understand if he has bad memories or trauma, but that's not something you should put your family through. One day he went to leave, and before doing so, told my sister and I to have fun growing up without a father. I cried and ran after him as he raced out of the driveway in the vehicle. He was gone for several hours before my mother actually got worried and had to call around. My grandmother on my father's side believes homosexuality and transsexuality is a sin. He follows close after her. My grandmother heavily disapproves of my mother and is incredibly fake. Whenever my grandmother would talk down to my mother, he wouldn't stand up for her at all. Things on my father's side of the family have always been tense. My friend group is filled with transsexuals and homosexuals. I was talking to my mother about a new friend I'd made and he happened to be nearby. My new friend was trans and then he started blabbering about how it was a sin despite me not even talking to him. We got into a very loud argument that my mother had to try and stomp out. Before she got us to stop, he said quietly enough for only me to hear, having you was a mistake. This really sparked my hatred for him. I became distant to him for the whole year of COVID and still can't manage to forgive him. Lo and behold, he noticed, but he didn't remember the argument or even what he said and that absolutely destroyed me. My mother even told him how the argument that we had was probably the reason. She remembered and he didn't. His beliefs are so strong they take precedence over his own daughters. My sister has suffered major bullying over the years and has always been tough. Her friends were turned on her because of someone she had trusted and was accused of being homophobic. My sister is an amazing person and her trust was completely broken by this. Instead, all my father could think about was how homosexuality was a sin and nothing else. This set my mother over the edge and is what led her to actually thinking about divorce. They still haven't divorced, but I feel like they should have long ago. He always makes me feel bad for being distant by getting expensive vacations and gifts, but I feel like I'm in the right for being hateful toward him. I still have a hard time even calling him father. Most times I just say he and him to avoid it without my mother or him raising questions. I hate being told I look or argue like my father. I look like the mini version and sometimes just absolutely explode when angry. Am I wrong for having this distrust and resentment? I'm not even sure if he would be even considered entitled. I'm so unsure of how to feel about him and if I should even consider my feelings about this valid. If you did legitimately nothing to possibly get close to deserving that kind of treatment from your father, and your father is willing to look you in the eyes and quietly say to you, having you was a mistake, you are not in the wrong for resenting them. I just know I would be absolutely crushed in OP's position, at least initially. I think I would grow up to resent somebody like that and I would be more than happy to just cut them off. Our next story is, I need an unbiased opinion. Is my mom being extremely insensitive or am I wrong? I really need an unbiased opinion as to if my mom is in the wrong here or if I am or if we both are. I especially would like to hear from you if you're a parent yourself. As I'm not a parent yet, I can't put myself totally in her shoes. I'm 28 year old female and I've been with my husband, 30 year old male, since we were 19 and 21. He's a chronic pain sufferer, mainly trigeminal neuralgia, which is considered one of the most painful conditions known to man. He's had four shoulder surgeries as well, as a result of high school sports injuries, and although the surgeries were successful, he will likely always be in pain, unless he gets full shoulder replacements. He's experienced more pain than most elderly people. This isn't even the full extent of the pain ailments. 
Despite all this, he spent the first few years after college working while living at home, and was able to put most of his paycheck, plus an inheritance, into stocks and crypto. Things blew up and let's just say we'll likely not have to work a traditional job ever again. He does day trading and I have a few Etsy shops I do for my pure enjoyment. I genuinely have never been a career woman. More power to you if you are, but I just want to be a stay-at-home wife and mom one day, hopefully soon. Because of his physical injuries, housework is probably more split 70-30, and I'm usually the one to carry heavier stuff, like cases of Costco water. This is honestly no burden to me at all. I'm blessed to be as abled body as I am, and I enjoy being able to help someone I love. Now, add my mom into the picture. My parents divorced when I was young, but my dad was very much an involved parent. I'm extremely close with him, but my mom was the primary custody parent. He unfortunately passed away in 2017 at only 50. I think she feels a lot of guilt for some of the ways she raised me. Typical boomer slash gen x stuff, spanking, respect your elders, extremely high expectations, not good with regulating emotions, never apologizing for when she was wrong as a kid, etc. That she overcompensates by caring so much about me that she doesn't give two craps about my husband. To a point where, in my opinion, she says extremely insensitive and tone-deaf things. I understand putting your child first, but I feel the way she's begun to speak about him has been downright disrespectful. I have several examples. One, asking why we were just sitting around and suggested we go to some touristy summer event in his town two weeks after his third shoulder surgery when I was taking care of him. Yes, I told her I was going to see him post-surgery. She knew. Shoulder surgery is a major surgery, at least the one he had. I had a cosmetic nose job in 2021, an objectively less intense surgery than shoulder. She never asked me why I was just sitting around in the weeks after my surgery when I actually felt more than well enough to be up and out by day 5. 2. A few years ago, he was in the hospital for what felt like appendix pain. I made the mistake of telling her. She told me to call her so she could comfort me for how hard it must be to see him in pain, and even suggested I leave the room or go outside the hospital with cell service leave him all alone in agonizing pain to call me so she could comfort me. If I was in an active unmedicated childbirth and in a lot of pain and he left me all alone to call his mommy and get comforted by his mommy because it upset him to see me in pain, I guarantee she would be furious at him and rightfully so. There was a time and a place for a caretaker to be comforted. Three. In 2021, we did a cross-country move, not saying which states for confidentiality, but the total driving time with stops was about 30 hours. The drive caused a severe chronic pain flare-up in his back. He almost went to the hospital. Two hours after I told her he was in severe back pain from driving, she said, Have him build it, it'll be easy. In response to me being annoyed that the movers wouldn't put together our king-size bed frame for liability reasons, and we had to pay someone $200 to do it and wait several days. 4. She's asked at least 4 different times for us to drive to an east coast state from a west coast state for some occasion, either forgetting or not caring about how bad his back hurt after the first drive, and knowing darn well she wouldn't drive to us versus fly if it wasn't an imminent emergency situation. 5. Prior to a visit, she asked us if we had any dietary restrictions or preferences. Mine are strictly preferences, but there are a few foods he won't eat because it makes his pain flare up bad. Mostly seed oils like canola. Everything she bought had said ingredients that make his pain flare up, but she followed my dietary preferences to a T. She also has dietary restrictions, and every time she'd visited me, I followed them happily. She said, it's not a big deal for him to eat it just for a week. 6. This is probably the worst one in my eyes. My husband has a complicated relationship with his mom. She's basically a functioning alcoholic who in drunken fights has told him she wished she ended him other absolutely horrific things and has thrown drinking glasses at him in fights, resulting in him getting physically cut constantly belittles him for not working a real job when he's made more in a year than she's made in her life. It's a very hot and cold relationship and she's been verbally abusive at minimum his whole life. 
Cutting someone off, especially a parent, is a never an easy decision. I know because I did it with a grandparent. It's not my place to ask, demand, or expect him to cut ties with a parent. That's a decision one has to come to on their own, when and if they're ready. My mom was sort of saying I should make him do it. All because of one line his mom said to me. Not because of what she had done to him his whole life. She was harping on the one and only time his mom said something unkind to me. You stole my son away from me and moved him across the country. Typical toxic boy mom stuff, but nothing in comparison to the horrible things she said to him. He very much did defend me when this was said, by the way. My mom harped over the one line she said to me about how horrible she feels for me. In reality, I don't give a freak that his mom said that line to me. It's nothing in comparison to what he's been told. I have no emotional ties to her. I can make the decision to never see her again, should I choose, and it'll have no emotional impact on me. That's his mom. No matter how toxic she may be, it's difficult to cut a parent off, and I imagine it's very emotionally traumatizing for him to hear those things from a parent. I spoke up and said, don't worry about me. I'm not the one with an abusive mother having to hear horrible things no child should ever hear. Show some concern for him. And she said, I only worry about you. You're my kid. And immediately changed the topic. This basically confirmed she doesn't care about him and has no empathy for someone who, in many circumstances, has been dealt a difficult hand. I literally feel like I could tell her, Hey mom, I cheated on my husband, assaulted him, and maxed out all his credit cards and he wants a divorce. I'm so upset. And she would find a way to make me be the victim. She also takes things extremely personally, and I have to go out of my way to make her not feel like a horrible mom. Like I mentioned above, we did a cross-country move. She lives in, and we previously did, a very red state. Even though she isn't a Republican, she lives there solely for the warm weather. We left the state largely because I'm bisexual slash very pro-LGBT and very pro-choice. Two of the things this state wasn't. Not a place I wanted to continue living in, especially as we were trying to get pregnant. It was hardly the environment we wanted to raise a kid in. We live in a blue state now. My husband agrees with me, but had an added reason to want to move, and that was to get away from his toxic mom and have more distance. When I mentioned this, she says, Guess you moved away to get away from your toxic mom too. No, I never said that. I have endlessly told her I wanted to leave because of the politics in said state. But she always makes it about her, and I have to go out of my way to comfort her. Anytime I mildly confront her about anything, her response is, well, I guess I'm just a horrible mother then, and proceeds to cry. It's extremely immature, so I have no idea how I'm going to approach the situation. I don't want to cut her off. I love her very much. But if she continues to not have basic empathy for the most important person in my life, it will definitely put a strain on our relationship. Her mom, my grandma, is aware of the situation and is on my side, and is even willing to be the middleman and help me talk to my mom gently, largely because they live in the same town and these types of talks are better in person. My grandma and I are extremely close. She's young by grandma terms, 72. My grandma's always treated my husband with an enormous amount of love, empathy, and kindness, and they're very close. She treats him like she does any of her grandkids. She broke down in tears upon hearing of how my husband's mom spoke to him. She briefly acknowledged that what his mom said to me was dumb, but it was nothing in comparison to him. I was not the focus of his abuse. Anyway, I would really love to know if anyone's dealt with this, any advice, or am I totally in the wrong here? I definitely don't think OP's in the wrong in any way here. You would definitely like if your parent would be willing to support and care about your significant other who clearly means so much to you. I mean, the fact that they can't even like feign pretending to care is just telling. I mean, it's nice that she's supportive to a fault with you, but that doesn't really correspond with what you care about. I would just not give in to the things that she's basically trying to manipulate or prod towards. You know, the fishy stuff like, you move to get away from me. That's only said because she wants to hear, no mom, I love you, I would never hurt you. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. 
Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.